storage is the oldest method of food preservation. It's also the easiest. Many perishables, such as onions, potatoes, and carrots, were historically stored in a cool, dry environment, such as a root cellar. These structures were built into a hillside wherever possible. Some roots, however, are best stored in the ground during the winter and dug up as needed. The tubers of Jerusalem artichoke are an example. During the summer, they are mostly fiber that the human digestive system cannot break down to extract usable calories. After the first frost, the tubers start producing slow-acting enzymes that break down the fiber into simple sugars that are easily digested. The second major method of food preservation is drying. Seeds, fruit, vegetables, and meat were often dried by the sun or over a smoky campfire. There are many different recipes and approaches. Corn and meat were staples for the American pioneers. Sweet corn, that is green corn, as well as dry, mature corn were often parched over a fire until they turned brown and then began to pop. There are many different recipes. Dried meat was eaten as jerky, or it was made into pemmican, an invention by Native Americans. Pemmican is a nutritionally dense, high-energy food that can last for years. It is ma made by pounding dried meat into a powder and then mixing it with fat and, in some cases, adding fruit. Canning is the third method of food preservation. In 1795, the French military offered a cash prize for a new method for food preservation. As a result, Nicolaus Appert invented canning in 1806. Canning involves a cooking the food, sealing it in sterile cans or jars, and then boiling the containers to kill the remaining bacteria. The popularity of canning spread rapidly worldwide. These three major methods were used in conjunction with additional techniques, such as pasteurization, which slows microbial spoilage by heating the food briefly and then cooling it, using oil and vinegar to prevent the growth of microorganisms, curing meat with salt or sugar to draw out moisture, using sugar to create an environment hostile to microbes, and pickling food in an edible antimicrobial liquid, such as brine, vinegar, alcohol, or vegetable oil. For dinner, I'm going to demonstrate some of the techniques we've talked about. I'm going to have beef jerky, parched sweet corn, seed sprouts, caramel pudding, and corn coffee. Smoking meat over a campfire is a very old method of drying it, probably going back to the same time that hunters discovered fire. I used lean, boneless meat uh, for this jerky. It was brisket. I uh, cut it into thin eighth-inch strips, made sure there was no fat on each strip. I removed the visible fat and then put it on this tripod to dry. It normally takes a couple of days for beef to dry like this over a fire. To speed that up for this video, I started the drying process in my oven at home. I set the oven at the lowest temperature and had the door slightly open to dry the beef rather than cook it. And then after about six hours, I took it out and then put it here on this tripod. And I'm going to um, smoke it the rest of the day. This is the sweet corn that I parched a few weeks ago. I cut it off the cob, heated it over a campfire until it turned brown and began to pop. It's an excellent food, a highly nutritious, great snack, can be stored for months. I just added a little bit of salt. Mmm. For trail greens, I've made seed sprouts. This is an excellent food that can be carried with you on the trail. You start with dried seeds, 
and add water to get it going. And here I started these sprouts uh, several days ago. I soaked the seeds in water overnight and then put them in a moistened muslin sack to grow. I keep it outside my haversack. I add a little bit of water every, every a couple of hours and very quickly I have sprouts. Uh, sprouts have a long history. They were used by the Chinese uh, for many disorders, for healing powers. They were described in the book of Daniel in the Bible. Uh, Captain Hook in the, in the 1770s prescribed eating sprouts and limes to prevent scurvy, that is vitamin C deficiency. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I learned about limes for preventing vitamin C deficiency, but never heard about sprouts. Sprouts are just as effective and they really taste good. For dessert, I'm making caramel pudding. The recipe is simple. I put a can of condensed milk in water and let it boil for three hours. The milk will caramelize into a sweet pudding. Condensed milk has many uses and was an important field ration by the Union Army during the American Civil War. It was an extraordinary food for the 19th century. A typical can contained 1,300 calories. Everybody liked condensed milk. The Surgeon General William Hammond said uh, the milk was in extensive use in our armies and hospitals. It was an unmatched remedy for low fevers which plagued the army. A favorite concoction was milk punch, a combination of condensed milk and brandy or whiskey. After the war, many recipes were developed for using this sweet milk. It was healthy for the whole family, from infants to adults. It is easy to turn this milk into a sweet pudding. You just boil it in a can. You can add all sorts of stuff to it. It's really, really simple. I'm preparing corn coffee to go with the meal. The Confederates roasted cornmeal as one of many different coffee substitutes. Real coffee was generally not available in the South. The recipe that I'm using was printed in the Charleston Mercury, October 5th, 1861. Now you may think, you know, cornmeal that you turn brown like this, you turn brown, won't taste very good as coffee. Actually, you're wrong. It tastes pretty good. Uh, you can roast it over a campfire like I'm doing here until it turns brown, or you can put it in an oven at 400 degrees, watch it carefully, and take it out when it's brown, and make yourself a cup of java. Dinner's all ready. Jerky, seed sprouts, parched green corn, and caramel pudding. And uh, I'm fortunate this afternoon because some of my subscribers came by and, and decided to visit. So they're going to join the taste test. Come on, Jack. Jack and his family are going to, to join the taste set, test, sit right down here. And this is corn coffee. Now, let's see how that is, Jack. Give you a little of it, and I'll take a little of it. Very With, hot. <laughs> it's very hot. Let's, let's see. Why don't we wait on that? It's a little too hot. Would you like to have some parched sweet corn? Sure. 
And this I made a couple weeks ago. Thank you. You only need a little of it in a survival situation. Now the best part of this meal is the beef jerky. And it's been drying for a while. Would you like to have a piece, Jack? Now it's really, really chewy. We can divide this up a little. It's really chewy. It's different from modern meat. Would you like some or? Okay. Ah! That's good. For your honest, that's good? That's really good. Wow. Yeah. I think the trick to it is smoking it over a fire. It adds quite a bit of flavor. And then we have sprouts. Healthy greens. I highly recommend this for any camping adventure. And then the dessert is caramel. You don't, you don't have a spoon. Bring a, didn't bring a spoon. Oh, well. We'll be all right. You can taste it with my wood spoon. Okay. Mmm. No caramel? Man, it's just like caramel, because it is. This is, the way, this is the way caramel was made historically. Well, I think the coffee should be cool enough now. Let's see. Mine's good. That is good. See, it, it, you know, these unusual ways to do things uh, are worth trying. I think this is, this is good coffee. I might try it again. I invite video responses. It would be great to see your campfire recipes and food preservation techniques. Until next time, peace.